Here at Quest Precision Engineering in Dundee, they're making process transformations by investing in Nakamura technology from the Engineering Technology Group. Kia, we're here in front of some fascinating components that you guys make here at Quest, but today we're talking about this. This is part of a family of components. Um, what are they? So these parts are called autonomous inflow control devices. They are used for extracting oil out of the reservoir. These parts are all universal with the N30 thread. These go into various sand screens across the world and they're used for extracting oil and eliminating any extracting of water or gas. Absolutely, and this is a simple one. There are some complicated ones. Um, and there's one called the Mark III. Um, that's fairly complicated. Um, can you describe that component and how you made it normally? So this Mark III valve, as well all the other valves, are made out of Ink Nelson 18. This, at the prototyping stage, was manufactured over six components, uh, sorry, six operations, uh, six machines, six guys, excluding the guys on night shift. So over a 24 hour period, we had 10 guys on this, on this job. Why is it so hard to make? What kind of features does it have? So this, this uh, part has got many different features from face grooves, threads, internal seal grooves, deep slots that are 2 mil diameter, uh, over 12, 12 mil long, it's very hard to achieve. Uh, and then Ink Nelson 1-8, it's also got other upstands, a lot of milling operations as well. So uh, for the family parts that we do in here, that is one of the most difficult that, that we can manufacture at Quest. And what are the problems associated with such a long production process? So with that there, you've got too many guys on it. Uh, and from there, going from machine to machine to machine, you've got various problems that could go wrong. A simple one is just transferring it from one machine to another. A person might drop it, you damage it. With these parts, if they get dropped or damaged, they're over. You need to make it again. And uh, with this material, we can't afford any scrap. Absolutely, They're such high value components. Now, you actually made a machining transformation making these, you now make them uh, in a completely different way. What happened? How did you do that? So we invested in an NTYC, a Nakamura. Uh, this condensed the six operations into one with one guy. This machine allowed us to have three turrets, all with Y-axis, two upper, one lower. This done all the complex milling, the complex sunning, and it's even letting us engrave sequentially on there. So when this part comes off the machine, it's complete. Absolutely. And what are the benefits of that kind of transformation in production? So for my side of things, it's freeing up more guys, it's freeing up capacity elsewhere that I could offer to our customers, customers we are, we are bringing on board, and it's upskilling all employees as well. With this machine, this is one of the most high-tech machines that we have got in here. Absolutely, and what kind of, how much capacity could you give to customers to offer? Well, offer we're freeing up another five machines, well, six machines. I'm offering hundreds of hours of capacity now to a customer. Absolutely, and that transformation is, is good for the shop floor, for the working practice here, but also for the business as a whole now. Because of the transformation for the business as a whole, yes. you've got another machine, <laughs> yes. but this has been uh, bought kind of with a, uh, another valve in mind, the Mark IV. Yes. What's special about that valve? So what's been beautiful to see is the evolution of these products. You went from a Mark II and a half to a Mark III, now a Mark IV. And as they get, get fuller on, they get more difficult, but we like that, it keeps us on our toes. And this machine is allowing us to do the Mark IV in, in one hit. And now, to the eye, it's just one hole. But this hole is, is very small, so over a millimetre in diameter, over 15 mil long, and it's at an angle of over 30 degrees. Now, for us to machine that, I would have to put that on a five axis machine, a big NH8000, which to do that size of part isn't viable. With having this, it allows us to do it all again in one op uh, with the uh, one machinist, and the whole thing is going to come off complete, which is it's incredible, to be honest. Absolutely. I'm going to cover this incredible machine um, with an operator called Craig. He's going to talk us through what he loves about the machine and what they're hoping to do in the future, hopefully, with this Mark IV valve. Craig, you're the cell leader here at Quest, and I've been told you're kind of the Nakamura man to talk to around here. Well, I'd like to think so. I think I'm pretty clued up in what they obviously can do. Yeah, definitely. So we're talking to the right man. Yep. Um, and Keir was explaining a little bit about the Mark IV valve. Why does it need this machine um, to make him one hit? Because uh, if we tried to do it on obviously some of the other Nakamuras we have, what we'd have to do is buy an angled head to do this uh, 32 degree angle hole that we have. But obviously with the MX100, we could do that because we have a swinging B axis, which will obviously fully rotate. So let me show you. Cool. So you're opening the door. Let's have a look inside. Look at the configuration. Yeah. So obviously, top head, that fully swings minus 90 this way, 90 degrees that way. Gives us full options of whatever angled holds we want to do, milling slots, anything like that. It's got full turning capability as well, so we can lock the spindle up. It's not just for the milling tools. We also now have the bottom turret as well. So it's a 24 station, half index turret. Obviously, gives 
a vast amount of tools that we can use. We can use on either the main spindle or the sub spindle, whatever way we want to do it. We've got so much clearance and so much. So much space, look, vertical that. space as well. Yeah. Um, people probably won't have seen this kind of machine out in the wild very often, will they? No, no, they're, they're, they're a fairly specialized machine. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so hopefully with a Mark IV valve will be, it's in development right now. Yes, yes. Um, and once you've got it up and running, you see up here, there's actually a bit of infrastructure. What is that? Yes, so that, that, this machine, this specific, specific configuration is actually built with a Gantry loader. So we could fully autonomize the whole process. Obviously having our bar feeder at the back there, bar length coming in up against our stop, machine over first end, second end, Gantry loader will come in, pick out the finished part and just put it on the conveyor at the end and out it'll pop. So ideally it doesn't complete. matter the complexity of the component, if it fits in the bar feeder, you can automate it. Absolutely. Perfect, okay. Looking at a machine like this though, with this, this complex configuration, milling, turning, different angles, um, second sub turret, sub spindle, it looks quite daunting. Some people might think, well, it's going to take a long time to learn. I might not be able to even run a machine that's complicated. It, it's not as daunting as what you think. It's, it's a case you really just have to break it down into stages when you're doing it. And a lot of the functions that are on the Nakamura are very, very user friendly. I think like even simple things. We we'll have uh, smart support, which obviously gives you various cross row chamfering, long hole drilling cycle. So little sub programs that you just put into your program, it does it all for you. Depending on what head you're on, it's it, it's just very very simple. It, it's very easy to understand. There's so many, just so many functions. It's like. You go here, the everything's laid out in a very nice, methodical way that is very easy to see and very easy to understand. And I guess as a cell leader, it's important for you to upskill the team all around here. You've got people who can start on a, on a lower spec Nakamura machine and move all the way up to this, this crazy MX100 without, yeah. without much difference in the machine control. Yeah, absolutely. That's what I like about the Nakamura is, is the fact that the whole control panel is the same on every one of them. So what it allows is just someone who, as you say, has been on a very basic one, up the come, all the way through, and then they still know where every function is that they need. They Absolutely. know how to change their offsets, they know how to do that. Yes, the program might be a little bit more complex, but they can understand it, they understand what's happening, and they're able to start to machine the part at the end of the day without much supervision. And once you've got a process you can run, and you've uh, managed to develop the, uh, the Mark IV process properly, you're going to be cutting some Inconel 718 on this machine as well. Yes. How is this machine to actually run in terms of machinability? It, it's very good. Because it's so compact, it's very rigid, which actually makes a big difference. It just makes it n n nice and compact. Everything's good that way. If you have any issues, especially with like swarf evacuation or anything like that, we could put the oscillating cutting on, which helps obviously get the swarf nice and short and chips. And we could have got an anti-chatter function as well which any issues we've got with finishes, any chart function on, just helps the finish and improves that, gives it to the next stage. Perfect, so complex configurations, easy to program, and a machine you can use with any kind of material, making complex components in an automated way. That's the Nakamura MX100 here, Quest Precision in Dundee.